Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and welcome back to an all new survival video. Today we have Arkham Batman surviving in Dead Island 2. Could he do it with the stipulations and rules that we are about to give him? Let's find out here. Keep in mind, Batman will be analyzing every zombie he comes across as it's within his character. Now, for the other set of rules, right? There will not be any immune in the beginning of the story, meaning they will not be on the plane. Thus, they never meet Emma and stuff like that. And let's just say they're scattered around the, you know, they're scattered around um, L.A. and stuff like that here. And Batman is on the plane instead here. However, he has his bat suit. And once realizing one of the people is infected, he goes into the bathroom, suits up, right? And, well, survives the plane crash along with the other survivors, all right? So, he will also be having his Arkham Knight suit at the beginning. Allow him to do his fear takedown, stuff like that, move more fluently here, because he is going to need it. However, we are limiting him to his Arkham Asylum gear, his Batarang bat claw and or bat grapple is what else as you know whatever um his line launcher his basic batarangs his sonic batarangs and obviously he would still have his cryptographic sequencer as that's in honestly in every game so there's a uh, no if and or buts about that batman will also not be infection proof all right he won't be immune to the um infection meaning if he gets bit it's over However, again, Arkham Knight armor kind of does cover it here. However, he will be kind of like, I guess you could say, saved from the, uh, what's it called? The airborne virus. So without further ado, let us begin. And keep in mind that Arkham Batman is around the small to around building level, you know, um, category or tier here. With the zombies also ranging from that, at least some of the higher up ones, like the Crusher, uh slobbers butchers and the mutilators and screamers and stuff like that so they will all range from there as they're able to tank oil tanker explosions point blank and be fine from it so yeah batman in the beginning of the game when the plane crashes and stuff will actually be dealing with things like shamblers walkers and runners keep in mind the most difficult ones of these group are actually the runners here as they're actually capable of dodging batman's attacks and stuff like that here but again with the arkham knight suit he still should be able to hit him but again you know survival situation survival capability survival equalization and stuff like that yeah the runners will be able to dodge and react to people like batman here considering the fact that the immune are as well enhanced to the point where they can knock out and take out the crushers so um yeah, Batman's going to have a difficult time here. Now, during the plane sequence, or sorry, during the plane sequence here, Batman would have a pretty easy time here. Just, you know, making his way through the plane here, using any of his bat gadgets, stuff like that. Even if he is a little bit injured from the plane crash here, he could still find a med kit and just, you know, make sure he's all right after that here. But, um, yeah, he should honestly be fine here navigating the plane using his detective vision to actually analyze you know the situation here now meaning ronnie michael emma yeah he would pretty much get out of there with them rather than staying here noticing the man or joshua who is pretty much just left under the plane here um this actually does change a little bit here because again batman would realize that Joshua has really no way of coming with him unless he does buy the time to lift up the plane parts off of him. And then the sheer fact that his wife is also infected and in the process of transforming because of his detective vision. Now, this does mean he doesn't go through the first part of the game like the immune would, which again, they're not here at the moment in the story here. Meaning that Batman would be able to make it there without any of the trouble or fuss that they went through. Batman also would not have a bite mark because, again, his armor would be, I definitely would say his armor, at least his Arkham Knight armor, is definitely thick enough to withstand a, what's it called, a walker's bite here. And keep in mind, yes, I do think Batman would have to help out and definitely deal with some of the infected and would be able to. Yeah, he would definitely be able to deal with the walkers, runners, mm -hmm. and shamblers here, definitely being able to use the um, generators or power boxes here just to close the gate and stuff and definitely use them batarangs to slice off a couple zombie heads here now do i think batman will study him 
No, not yet, because he would think there were zombies. Batman would, however, make his way to the Haplin Hotel, like the um, immune or our characters did and stuff there. By the way, which characters do y'all like the best here? I'm, I love Jacob and Carla with Danny and the rest of them being like some of my other favorites. But again, Carla and Jacob are on top. But um, Batman would use this opportunity to make the caustic X-bomb out of his own gear. Now, I do think it is possible he would definitely take some of the caustic X and study it. But realizing how effective it is against zombies, it would be pretty easy here. Batman would also likely meet Rav a bit earlier in the story. But I do think I am getting ahead of myself here. Batman would go through the hotel, definitely be able to use any of the communication or any of the scraps or any contents in the hotel to likely boost his suit's durability and his overall fighting capability as well. This does mean that Batman should be able to take a couple bites and or cuts or stabs from the infected. Albeit the Dead Island zombies or the Dead Island 2 zombies are way different from the Dead Island 1 zombies and I will be making that in a future video on why they're vastly different here because um yeah the dead island 2 zombies are way more dangerous here now this is where batman meets the bride and she's a crusher here so realizing that i do think batman's best strategy is either to evade and place explosive gel on the floor of the room or again use whatever he has in the environment cause it to explode and definitely deal with the crusher that way now Batman making his way back from the Haplin Hotel all the way to Bel Air would definitely be able to realize that the infection seems to be, I guess you could say adapting, you know, in a way here. But I don't think he would make a big deal out of this just yet here. Now, during the side missions and stuff here, Batman would definitely, you know, take care of the side missions pretty easily here. And this is where we actually have some other changes here. Amanda would get dealt with immediately. I don't see Batman, you know, letting her go in the type of ways that our player or our character did. Because, again, our character has a limited amount of gear and a limited amount of time here. All right. He has to he or she has to make their way to the um, Ocean Avenue. All right. So in all honesty, Batman having possibly a lot more time on his hands and definitely being a bit more, I guess, say proactive than our players are would definitely be able to actually grab Amanda and take her back to Emma's house where she would be able to survive here. Meaning we don't get the ending for Amanda, which in all honesty is a very good thing here. Because again, you realize why she did this is actually pretty sad here. Like again, zombie apocalypse can change your, you know, state of mind and stuff like that. But again, Batman will be able to deal with all these zombies pretty easily. And again, if a crusher comes along, he can deal with it probably in a lot easier ways than he did Grundy. But again, we have to consider the sheer fact that this zombie apocalypse is a whole lot more different than any other one. It's adapting, continuously growing, changing, and even becoming a bit more tactical. And Batman would actually see this when he sees zombies starting to wear, um, you know, bombs and stuff like that, some of them running at him while they're on fire, and actually being fine being on fire and stuff here. And this would, again, change Batman's whole viewpoint on what's going on with these zombies, and I do think he would start collecting samples from each individual zombie, and definitely place them in a place in his utility belt, and leave them until, you know, he found Michael here. And again, I do think he would be doing this when he, do, when he um, you know, goes after Michael and stuff like that, because again, I think it's the perfect point in the story to where he could to where he could, you know, collect a reasonable amount of zombie um, DNA. You know, he definitely goes to Beverly Hills. He meets Roxanne and Ricky. Yeah, um, we don't talk about Ricky here. And uh, yeah, he would basically make quick work of any zombie. He's definitely getting Jesse. Almost forgot about that myself here. Yes, he does rescue Jesse and does take her back on his own, making sure she actually gets there safely. Albeit, it is possible he could trust Jesse to take care of herself after seeing all the traps that are laid down there. Batman would definitely search any of the other houses in the Bel Air district, or sorry, the um, Beverly Hills district, I should say, and would definitely um, make quick work of any zombies out of there. There are a limited amount of survivors that are there, and in all honesty, it is what it is. If they're in the safe area, they're in a safe area. Batman would definitely be able to complete a lot of these, um, what's it called? A lot of these uh, pipe puzzles 
<laughs> he definitely would be able to complete them pretty easily. And I definitely see a mini with Sam B and Ronnie here when it comes to the um, weapons here. Because Batman isn't too shy about his allies having guns and stuff. And again, since the infected are basically killing people. And the sheer fact that, again, these are zombies here. He wouldn't have problems killing zombies. But again, he wouldn't use guns. Now, Ronnie actually gets to live here because I think Batman would instinctually know that something's off about the um about this new zombie or whatever, the screamer, right? And he would definitely take him and just, you know, get Ronnie out the way. Probably using his bat claw to basically grapple Ronnie to the top of the building and then go on to handle the rest of the zombies. Now, we gotta remember Batman still encounters his first slobberer in the monarch studios district all right he still encounters that one when saving michael and i think he would make it, it would be difficult i don't see batman using his explosive gel because i don't think he would want to get that close here but he would use his explosive gel on the gas canisters around it likely making a big explosion but then again this could also draw in other zombies so it's very possible batman uses his sonic batarangs and start aiming from vital points on the zombie over and over and over again until he gets to you know you know takes down the zombie and gets him out of there however i do think because of his detective vision he would realize that michael has been bitten and that the infection is in him meaning that there's one or two things that could happen one batman traps michael within the um within the trailer here and just takes the medical supplies from him and just leaves him there to turn it's dark but again, it's something that Batman would probably do in order to kind of not risk him being infected. But let's say Batman doesn't do that and he lets Michael go. He is eventually going to have to put him down when he gets to Amanda and he starts to turn. Now, fast forward, Batman completes more side missions and again, bring a lot more people in or keep them in safer areas. We would then enter the Heart of Darkness where Batman definitely is going to take a sample of the biomass. Because, again, if you guys look at the biomass very carefully and pay attention to the detail, it starts um, reacting to you, you know? And I do think Batman would realize that, okay, this is growing everywhere and it's intentionally growing, you know, upward for some reason. So he would definitely take a sample of it. And this is where I actually see the autophage or the biomass itself here becoming more active and trying to actively kill Batman. And this is where Batman meets the... Um, Batman still meets Patton and definitely meets the um, Exploders or the Suiciders, whichever one you want to call it. And again, Batman adjusts to that. And I would probably say he does leave Patton in there, considering that he is mentally unstable and he's not mentally well. And because of the harshness of society and stuff like that and how they treated him, yeah, I can definitely see Batman leaving Paddington, you know, there for right now. Now, when he meets Conrad and her crew for the first time, um, they would basically be getting him so he's not able to analyze and or stop the biomass here. But again, this is, um, and we're not sure how powerful combat is. It is kind of like, I guess you could say like implied she's on par with the characters like Jacob, Carla, Danny, Amy, and stuff like that. He's on, she's on par with them, but I don't know. I don't know. It's more, it's a bit interesting to say that here. But again, even if Conrad, let's just say, could physically fight Batman, Batman is not only more skilled, but he's a lot faster. Meaning that if they tried to disable that bridge, oh, as a matter of fact, it would actually be funny if they actually do that and then he just uses, sorry, he just uses his uh, line launcher, right? Just to casually glide across here. And again, if Conrad's on the same side as him and try, and they all try to jump him, Batman could simply just use a fear takedown to take them all out. Keep in mind, when he makes his way to Venice Beach here, I do see Batman having a lot more gear than he does in the original. A lot more lethal gear, I should say here. Because again, Batman's not playing around here. This is not only his life at stake, this is the life of everyone who's surviving here at stake as well. Keep in mind, Batman would definitely be able to rescue um, Dylan the lifeguard, who deserves to catch these hands. Like, yo, I, I, I can't, I can't, not today, not today, not today. Focus, focus, focus. But yeah, he would definitely be able to make some lethal gear. I definitely see him having some grenades. However, I see him adjusting himself 
when the screamers start actually like producing electricity and stuff like that. And then the crusher known as um think also another Dylan, but with the D I L L O N version of it, right? Actually starts to produce plasma and is able to tank an oil tanker explosion at point blank range here. So with that being said here, Batman now realizes that the autophage is not only active and alive, but but he also realizes that it's adapting to him. This means that there are going to be a lot more faster, stronger, and tougher zombies. You might say, does that mean Batman puts the people at risk here? Yes, it is very possible. Because again, unlike the immune, Batman is a far more effective at adapting, overcoming things than our characters are. Not to say our characters can't, over -adapt, can't adapt to the zombies and stuff. That's why they make their certain weapons and even able to create weapons with shockwaves here. But once Batman starts seeing like the different forms of the slobbers, like the fire and the putrefied parasite spitting one, um, yeah, he's definitely going to make some adjustment to his gear. And I actually see him making shot gauntlets. Now, keep in mind, these wouldn't be the same as the electrocutioner shotguns, as Batman does have a lot more advanced tech, as it's implied that Wayne Tech made a suit for the Flash that allows him to properly harness his connection to the Speed Force. And I actually can see Batman doing this for himself, but he's able to absorb the lightning from any of the electrified runners or walkers and stuff like that and the screamers and actually use them to actually power up the gloves here meaning he could store energy in the gloves and this would be kind of like his own little um fury mode here where he has all these shock gauntlets now making his way to ocean avenue i do see batman kind of trusting um dr reed here and again i think in the beginning he would here not seeing him as like a Lucius Fox or whatever, but he would definitely see him as a reasonable and valuable ally. And this is where Dr. Reed has him to go and get the laptop here, but not to, um, what you call it? Not to, uh, you know, get any blood work done on Batman, but to instead find the immune here. And this is where Batman meets Butcher the Clown. Now, Batman is likely to deal with Butcher the Clown almost immediately. Now, let's say it gets to there here. Batman's definitely not going to sit there and let Butcho jump on him. Or even if he does, I see Batman still being able to block Butcho's blades here. And definitely, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Judo throw uh, him off him. Now, after dealing with him, I definitely see Batman either, you know, using his explosive gel to detonate one of the floors beneath Butcho, letting him go into the water. Or, again, he does realize that Butcho is a threat. Butcho is a threat to anyone living in the area, and he deals with him right then and there. All right? Now, I definitely could see him interrogating Dr. Reed after he meets him with Conrad, meaning that there's a much bigger problem, and this may change Conrad's whole personality and the whole attitude here. Now, Batman would definitely go on to interrogate Dr. Reed after beating the living daylights and possibly locking away Conrad and I don't see him locking her away in a hotel area. I definitely see him locking her away in probably like a truck or something. And then just barricading it. Saying that if she moves, she'll just have every infected on her in a matter of minutes. You know, something that would be convincing here. Now, Batman would definitely find about Tisha's immunity. To find about Reed's part in the whole infection. And Reed would be looked at as a monster. Alright? And likely... Likely would be outed as a member of the Oshi, you know, the Ocean Avenue district or the team here. Now, do I think Batman completes the rest of his game pretty easily? Yes. Yes, he does. Now, I do think that Batman would stay here. Now, hear me out. Hear me out, right? I still think he does the sewer thing, gets Emma, Sam, Patton, and Amanda, I could definitely see here the videotape and recording, deals with the vicious butcher with utter ease, mind you, because now his gear is definitely over the top here. And at the end of the game, I could actually see him making the XE suit here. However, it's so much adapted to what's going on here that I think the infection or the biomass here or the autophage here wouldn't be able to deal with Batman. Keep in mind, Batman will also adjust his detective vision after meeting his first mutilator.
or mutator. This means that Batman is not only adapted to the virus here, but likely would go on, and I definitely think he would do this, he would go on to actually find and recruit every immune member and have them, I guess you could say, trained up and definitely weaponized here in order to deal with the autophage or the biomass here. Now, do I think he caused the Justice League or any other members of the superhero community? No, I don't think so, because it is very likely that they would get infected here. And again, it very, it's very possible that it would make the biomass a whole lot more dangerous because it controls or basically is all over all of LA here. So in all honesty, does Batman survive Dead Island 2? Yes, he does, but I'd definitely say with some moderate difficulty. Batman will have to adjust repeatedly to the different zombies here and definitely have, would make the XC suit, which is kind of like the ultimate suit in my opinion. It's like that. It's the... um the suit that you need to kind of get through this here thick enough that no butcher or mutator could pierce through it and again he would also have the immune helping him out in protecting everyone in their respective districts if in fact i definitely see him evacuating the ocean avenue and definitely taking them to the venice beach area where they all could have food and definitely getting them some more food and supplies as well so that they can defend themselves. So in all honesty, I do think Arkham Batman is both a danger and, but, sorry, he's a danger, but is a more beneficial to the island than even our characters would be. But that's going to be all today, you guys. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share with your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I hope y'all have a blessed day. Peace.